Good morning, uh, Bourgeois, Mangwanani. Um, humans and animals lose tissues and organs due to several reasons, including congenital defects, diseases, and trauma. Unfortunately, the human body has a low regenerative capacity compared to other animals, such as the salamander. The salamander is considered a superpower when it comes to tissue or limb regeneration. This is because the salamander is able to regenerate its limbs within a short period of time once it is broken or injured, as shown in this small video. So the question that we ask in our laboratory is, if the salamander can do this, why can't human beings' uh, bodies do the same thing? Tissue and organ shortages have been identified as a major public health challenge, with only a few deserving patients uh, getting the necessary transplantation. Many hospital waiting lists do not capture the magnitude of the crisis, partly because only sick people would go to the hospital seeking assistance. The rest would rather die at home. Globally, you see that uh, many people would benefit immensely if tissues and organs can be replaced on demand. Imagine going to the hospital and you need an organ and you can get it. Traditionally, uh, transplantation of int uh, intact tissues and organs has been the bedrock to replace diseased and damaged tissues and organs. The traditional reliance on these uh, donated tissues and organs, it faces the problem of donor shortages and the possible immunological rejection of the donated body parts. Therefore, the development of an endless supply of tissues and organs that can be used for transplantation, it represents one of the major challenges of our generation. And scientists and clinicians coming together have been developing strategies and protocols trying to come up or to, to create new tissues altogether or to regenerate damaged or diseased tissues. This is where regenerative medicine and tissue engineering comes in. The promise of regenerative medicine is founded on the potential and the ability to replace diseased or damaged tissues with laboratory-grown tissues, humanized animal tissues and organs, and bioartificial organs. As you can see in this uh, small graph over here, you can see that for kidney transplant, the number of people receiving kidney transplant and the number of people that require kidney transplant, there's a huge gap between the two. So generally, supply cannot meet demand. So there's need to come up with new ways to create or to regenerate diseased tissues. As you can see, whilst organ and tissue shortages are a worldwide crisis, Africa has been affected the most, with very few organ or tissue transplantation taking place on the African continent. And this is partly due to the cost that is involved in doing these operations, and also the lack of the technological advancement needed for, for such operations. I would like to tell you, uh, I would like to share with you one reason why Africa is about to take a giant leap in terms of regenerative medicine. This is because my colleagues and I in our laboratory, we have been able to come up with ways or strategies that can create tissues, and hopefully in the future, organs that can be used for transplantation. So this is the, 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 the hope that regenerative medicine can create different tissues and organs that can be used for transplantation. So how do we make tissues and organs? One of the tissues that we are interested in making is cartilage. You find that many sportsmen, farm workers, mining workers, professionals like you and me, have had their careers either cut short or their lives dramatically changed due to cartilage problems. Uh, regenerative medicine, coupled together with 3D printing using stem cells, is an increasing viable option that can be used uh, to create new tissues or to regenerate diseased or damaged tissues. So how do we make a tissue such as cartilage? We start off with a scaffold. And the scaffold, we make it using cells that we get from the patient that requires the transplant. Onto the scaffold, we add stem cells. By now, I think most of you uh, know about stem cells. Stem cells are, are an amazing type of cells that are present in your bodies, and they can differentiate into different cells and tissues. Now, the hard part is that, 
for you to induce stem cells into different tissues, you have to add a lot of uh, reagents, growth factors, cytokines, small molecules. This process will have to be done over and over again until you get the right tissue or material. This process is even expensive, even in developed countries. So, the exciting part is that my colleagues and I, we found a way to make um, tissues and possibly organs in the future in a cheap way. We have found a way to bypass the addition of growth factors, cytokines, small molecules, and so forth. So how do we do this? We have been able to use an experimental system that is composed of uh, different biomaterials that can induce differentiation of adipose-derived mesenchymal stem cells, for example, into cartilage using a process called controgenic differentiation. But most importantly, we were able to show the mechanism behind the process, which is very important because then, when you have made enough tissues, you can then stop the uh, process, or if the process is not going forward nicely, you can increase the speed of the process. We were able to use a different type of stem cells known as pluripotent stem cells, and we were able to induce endodermal differentiation using our experimental system, meaning that we are able to form lung tissue and uh, pancreatic tissue, and hopefully down the line we'll be able to help people with lung cancer and also diabetic people. Okay, and then again, most importantly, we were able to show through the mechanism that you can in speed up the process and you can stop the process. So this means that then we can then take advantage of one of the most impressive technological advancement of the past two decades, which is 3D printing. So after doing a proteomic analysis of analyzing the scaffold that we were using to see the proteins and the factors present, we were then able to take individual proteins and factors, mix them with our stem cells, and then put them in a 3D printer. Now, we don't call it 3D printing anymore. We call it 3D bioprinting because we are using biological material. So what will happen then is that our 3D printer will print whatever tissue that you want, either a tissue or a patch that can then be used for transplantation as illustrated in this small video. Okay, so basically what will happen is that using 3D printing, you can look at the damage or the injury that the patient has suffered. You take a picture of that, you do your analysis, and you put the information into a 3D printer, into your computer, and then you tell the 3D printer to use your biological material that you have put inside to print exactly what needs to be used for transplantation. And so what will happen is that at the end, the surgeon or the doctor on the day of the operation will either have a page that they can use, especially for skin or for any other organ, or they will have a little piece of tissue that is custom-made custom, custom made and personalized because most of the cells that we use for our experiments or for our, uh, in, in future, will be, we will get those cells from the patient that requires the transplantation. So there is no possible immunological rejection of that piece of tissue. But most importantly, we should never forget why we are doing this kind of research. For us and my colleagues, we are doing this research because there are so many people in society that need our help. We are talking of accident victims, we are talking of burn victims, we are talking of trauma victims. Even soldiers who have gone to war and have come back with different types of injuries and broken limbs. These are, these are the people that we are trying to help. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zobo.